getting ready to put the motor back in and start suspension work after that. That way I can work on brakes and replacing the A-arms, spindles, one on yards, master cylinder. Have to work on the shift linkage, but anyway, I power washed the engine bay today and um, here's what we're left with. Huge improvement. Here's what's left, or I should say what came out of it. There's a good bit more to it, but I've already washed a lot of it away. And what else? I'm just going to use a gas can as a gas tank for now. This guy ought to suffice. A five gallon. Backing out the inside here. So, you know, got to get it ready for the weekend. Today's Thursday. Back seat. <laughs> this is the, uh, this is my interior. As good as it gets so far. I'm not even sure the bottom's correct. The top seems right. It fell right in on the clips. But, I mean the top, the back. I don't know what the bottom is. It may or may not be correct. I have no idea. We'll see. I mean, it's the wrong floor anyway, so. Whatever. And what else? I'm going to have to hook up gas pedal and throttle linkage because, well, that is where the gas pedal is supposed to be. What else? I think I already said the ignition. Oh yeah, I'm going to have to hook up something to the shifter here for the transmission. It, it's binding right, right there. Right out. Hit my head. Right. Right there. Because, you know, the genius that did all this nonsense in here. And by the way, this isn't even the right steering car. I don't know what the hell it's from. But the genius that did this hack job couldn't even bother to figure out to hack a little bit more just to get the damn linkage to clear. So I'm going to have to do that. Um, what else? I think that's about it. <laughs> As if that wasn't enough. Well, that's where we stand for now. Check it out tomorrow. So, I got my dirty dingo motor mounts here. I think we'll put them in today. So, this part goes to the motor in the typical GM small block Chevy three bolt mount location. Like so. The other half gets bolted to the frame. And these welds are a bit sloppy, but hopefully they'll work. These mounts are also supposed to move the motor forward in the car by about three quarters of an inch. And that's supposed to provide clearance for HEI ignition coils, the HEI distributor, which I have on the back of the motor. So let's take a look and see 
how these are supposed to bolt in. It's the passenger side. It has a little P engraved. And the driver's side has a little D engraved. So let's take these over to the car and see what they look like inside here. All right, so the instructions say to remove two rivets, be this one and this one, that tie the cross member front cross member here to the rest of the frame and my exhaust is not right here but so here's the firewall frame idler arm exhaust in the way cross member two rivets all right it's so passenger side They're saying it goes in something like so. Doesn't look too bad. The old fuel line's kind of in the way. Cut that out in a minute. But I think the idea here is It's a little cramped under here. So the idea is these two rivets come out, they give you two bolts to go back in, in place of the rivets, and then two bolts come in up top here, I believe, and bolt the top part to the cross member. And this is the passenger side. Check out the driver's side. Should be the same thing. Two rivets come out, and this will bolt in. Now, the nice thing about these mounts is that not only do they work with a small block, maybe even with a big block, but since I might be moving to an LS motor, Dirty Dingo also sells the motor side that bolts to the LS blocks and adapts to the same in-car motor mount half. So if I decide to upgrade later, I don't have to mess with the motor mount and the frame again. I just have to swap out what's on the motor and it should just drop right in. So once I get the motor mounts in, in the front here, the dirty dingo mounts, I can remove the existing rear mounts that were bolted to the uh, bell housing on the transmission. And I'm thinking if I'm gonna take these out, then I might as well cut all of this crap out, this whole mount, cut this off of the frame. That'll give me more room for exhaust. Right now, this is just hanging loose because the motor's not in, but this will eventually raise up. Um, it'll also give me more room for brake lines as well as fuel line. So right now, on the passenger side, the exhaust wants to ride right up here, maybe even a little bit higher. It's a bit twisted at the moment, but it wants to ride up around this area, which I don't like because you've got fuel and exhaust, I mean, I'm sorry, fuel and brake riding right above where the exhaust wants to ride. So, by removing these, I'll be able to move the both fuel and brake lines higher up here on the frame, all the way back. 
keep a pretty straight line probably along the top of the frame. At least until we get to body mount back here. Uh, I don't know, I'll figure something out. But my initial goal is to remove both both of these mounts this one and that one and that also give me more width back here to get the motor in so I have a little more room to um, to finagle that back in so I'll kill a few birds with one stone get more room for the exhaust maybe some more room over here for fuel and brake lines as well as the exhaust and more room overall for back the motor putting it back in so that's the game plan let's see how it goes all right i'm going to try to remove the um the rivets from the cross member to frame connection up here i don't know how visible they'll be on camera but this is what I got to work with, so. That one's easy. One rivet out. Been in there for 60 plus years. Let's try to get this top one again. she goes landed right next to the other one all right so the rivets are out it wasn't too bad so for the other side I'll just use the flap disc I guess covered in metal but whatever all right so there's a nice clean holes didn't do too much damage to the frame take a closer look up here so That's where the two rivets wire got a little too close to the frame on the, on the top hole here, but the metal's all still there, just a little shiny. All right, let's see how the bracket goes in. All right, so driver's side holes. Get some of this crud off of here. It doesn't really sit flat up top. I'm not a big fan of that. And there is some adjustment here. I don't know if that's visible. I grab the bolts, nuts, and just mock it in place. Nut side in or nut side out? I'm going to have to drill these holes out for these bolts. Just a hair too small. All right. Where's my drill?
perfect. All right, where are we at? So do we want to go bolt side out? Yeah, I like that much better. So let's do bolt side out and that side up inside. So we need a washer. So these are supposed to just be a bolt-in replacement. No welding required, they say, but like I said, I might weld them in. See how well they fit in place first. I don't know exactly where they're supposed to sit just yet. Probably need to put the motor in, or at least leave it hanging, and then adjust these. They have a little bit of um, a little bit of adjustability in them, in that these holes down here in the bracket are slotted. So a little bit of room there. What I don't like is this fitment back here. I don't know how well that's going to show on camera. I'll try to get some light up in here. There's a bit of a gap. Now, if we go all the way down, it does seat a little bit better against the frame. Or, I mean, against the cross member. But there's still a bit of a gap. I don't know. We'll see through the other side. At least get the rivets out, get it lightly bolted in place. And I need to cut the fuel line. Or do I? At least take this clamp off. Am I going to run new fuel lines? Probably. I think I'm just going to slice this off. Yeah, it's in the way anyway. I gotta replace idler arm bushings. Yeah, it's just getting in the way. I'm just gonna cut it. Fuel line's done. Get this out of the clip. Took a little too much off that one. But I think it'll be fine. It was a little tight getting in there. Being that I'm a righty and whatnot. Took a little bit off of the frame there. I don't think that'll matter much. All right, let's pop the rivets out. Two. 
Cisco. I thought it hit the floor and then hit my foot. I'll drift it off. Anyway. There's one rivet. The other one popped out on the floor somewhere. I don't know where it went. I found the other rivet. Was it my boot? Alright, let's get this one situated. Like so. Okay. That's not too bad. Give him a drill back. All right. Let's see how these fit now. We can get to this from behind. Yeah, it's not too bad. Now I still need to drill two holes up in the top and cross member. Up. Up here. And over here. So this is looking top down. See what it looks like from the front. It's not too bad. All right. Sorry, I was trying to plug the camera back in because the battery doesn't last worth a shit. So I guess the question is, so they need to figure out how they need to sit this way. There's my mug. This way. And this way. This has been a little bit easier to get in. I guess what I mean to say is the rivets would have been a little bit easier to get out if the control arm wasn't in the way. But that's all right. Take them out another day. All right. So now that that's roughly in place, probably time to take a look at the transmission cross member. All right, so here's a transmission cross member. This too is a bolting unit from Speedway. They claim, and I don't see why I wouldn't, but they claim that you can use this for a TH350, uh, 400R, whatever, the 700R4, along with the four, what's that, the four L80E or whatever the hell they are. The, the, the ones that are typically paired with the, um, the LS motors. <clears throat> so again, this is sort of future-proof for me. I've got a TH350. And the way this works is this sits on top of the frame rail like so. These two holes bolt into the frame. The elongated holes are for adjustment like so. Maybe a bag of hardware. Oh, look, instructions too. Look at that. These look like some big self tappers. A transmission bolt, though. I guess you gotta supply your own for that. Anyway, that's what I'm looking to put in. Mock that up. Again, probably need to put the motor and trains in in order to really get it where it needs to be, but. We'll see. 
So I just temporarily slid the cross member, the transmission cross member in place. It's not a bad fit at all. Um, of course, my exhaust is in the way, but as far as fit me goes, I mean, there's a little bit of wiggle room back and forth, but I mean, that's a good thing for adjustability. But it does sit right on top of the rails, frame rails, rather well. So I think, I mean, that's pretty sturdy. Yeah, I don't see any reason why you couldn't. In fact, I will. Um, put this in temporarily, slide the transmission in, or drop the motor in and just set this guy back pretty far. Once the transmission's in, the motor's in. Just slide it up to where it needs to be. That's where the, the mounting pad sits with the, um, the cross member here. I think that'll work well. So now, let's take out these rear mounts. Got this guy here, same on the other side. Uh, got a brake line in the way, which I want to keep temporarily. Does that make sense? Keep temporarily? Point is I might reuse it. I might use, I will use it actually. So I'm going to keep the brake line in place. It's only a quarter inch, I say only. No, actually it's not. It looks like 3 16 That's interesting. Huh. I was going to say, I thought it was quarter inch because they're drumming the rear, but this looks like 3 16 with quarter up front and quarter going all the way around up to the master cylinder. All right. Well, can I get it out of the way temporarily? So we've got a T up front here. That's going to be a pain. Got a T up here. The mount here I can take out. Clip. I might be able to pull it down and out of the way. So I can get the grinder in here. Time for some Ugga Duggas. Mini Ugga Duggas. What happened here? We were doing so well. Okay. More 
loop. I mean, if this don't work, I'm just gonna have to get the uh, big boy. I don't wanna go there if I don't have to, but. Shit, at some point you just stop asking. All right, let's see what that did. better. Try the other one. Oh, baby. My battery die? No. Why did it stop? Get out of there, damn it. There we go. All right, let's go back to this baby here. she blows with smoke. All right, that's a hot nut. Right, let's take this crap out of here. We'll just let that hot washer fall. One side down. Kind of. Halfway. All right, so that's one bracket and bolts down. Take out this side. use a stronger impact but I don't feel like it. Try to get some more lube up in there. There we go. Put that back in. So, change of plans. I'm gonna try to use the um, the plasma cutter to cut these mounts out. It'll be a rough cut, but it should be a lot quicker. I'll still have to grind them down, clean them up, but hopefully this will make it a little easier. So, the remaining weld is up top here between the frame and the body. We've got three quarters of it cut out. And I still have to come back with the grinder anyway, but at least this will give me more room to work with. But I might just take the saws all right across the top.
That's not too bad. Just rip this off. Or not. One bracket out. So I'll grind all that down. Maybe, I might be able to get the saws all up in there. I don't know. Get this little flap off. Might have to wait until the body comes off to, um, to get in here. Yeah, there's a weld all in the back. Got into the frame just a little bit here, but I think that'll be okay. Had to make a hole for the blade to fit through the floor. No bother though, because the floor is going anyway. So, no harm, no foul there. Up oh, onto the other side. place to put the saw. Damn it. So, I have to make a hole to fit the blade through. Cut the top part off the blade. I need a little pinhole here. Weld that back in. So now I gotta grind all this crap off, leaving the top. Same on the other side. And if I don't forget, remove this too. I think this was the clutch pivot point. Again, I think that I could probably just drill these out, these dimples. I think those are, I don't know what you call them, but I think that's what holds it in. It's not welded, so. All right.
I had to change my flap disc. Well, one side's done. What a mess. Oh, it ain't perfect. I'll come back with a welder and weld these little spots back up, fill in some holes maybe. Fill in that hole. Maybe fill these in too. I don't know. We'll see. It's good enough to get the motor in. I want to drop the motor in tomorrow. It's currently seven, almost 7.30 at night. So, still have the other side to do. And my GoPro is covered in metal dust. All right. Well, it's gonna happen on its own. All right, so I'm gonna change it up a little bit. I'll try to get this clutch pivot out. What the hell is it mean to hit? Get that out of the way. It's gonna be a bit premature, but what the hell. Yeah, that did nothing. thing that's doing is making all the rust from the car for a while. Alright. Does that get us anywhere? Jesus, who cares? The hell is holding that thing in? Let's go back to the big one.
think I'm through to the frame. I don't believe it, man. Nothing. Nothing. What the hell? Even didn't budge a bit. Maybe just a hair. Jesus. Let's see if we can get this up in there. Now we're talking. Come on, baby. What the hell is holding this thing in? I think I found a crack in the frame. Not really sure what's going on here. Sure looks like a crack to me. Or maybe it's um, where the weld cut through. Yeah, I can feel something in the back here. So I think, you know, it feels like a glob of weld in the back right behind this hole. It's not even really a hole, but... They might have been in here a little too hot when they welded these um, brackets on. So, I think I'll grind all that out since I'm in here. That's interesting. Some kind of a nest in here. So I think I'll grind all of this out. And maybe come back in here with the MIG and weld that up. Just seems like a weak point. Back at it. I think the same thing's going on here that happened over here. The weld from that bracket kind of penetrated into the frame. So there's a lot of pitting. There, right along here. That light might be too bright. Anyway, I think I'll grind that out as well. And come back in later and fill that in.
Man, these scooters are everywhere. So that guy's cleaned off. I can run these down a little bit lower. I'm going to fill these in with some weld. Same with these lines. I'll fill them in, fill this in. Maybe this. And coming around the other side. I should probably clean this out. Fill that in as well. Well, with some of these dimples. Yeah, we've got some holes down here too from the from the um, from the plasma cutter. All right, I'm going to try to fill in some of these holes and the cracks. That was ugly. Let's see if we can do any better on the other side. All right, I'm going to start on the side that I welded up first. It should be substantially cooler than the other side. Well, it looks like shit, but maybe a little more welding will fix that. We'll see. I'm done for now. My shoulders are beat.